What's the scariest 100% true story you've heard of? Widespread Panath responded. Every orphan source report from the IAEA is terrifying and well documented with pictures. One of the most horrifying is the Goiania accident in 1987. For those who don't know, an orphan source accident is when radioactive material that had been lost, usually from an abandoned hospital, is discovered by people unaware of the danger, who inadvertently expose themselves and others to lethal and or permanently disfiguring doses of radiation. You read in horror, as survivors describe people inviting their neighbors to see the oddity they found and share samples, children playing with the sparkly dust, all unaware that they have just doomed themselves. Acute radiation exposure is a truly nightmarish way to die. Your flesh rots away over months while skin grafts are ineffective. You deteriorate in pain in the hospital until you die of infection or necrosis. One underscore um underscore Dean responded. My uncle was in a bar one night and started talking to this random guy. He described him as a really nice guy. He met him a few other times in the same bar. They drank and talked about random stuff. Soon after, my uncle stopped seeing the guy at the bar. IDK how long after, but my uncle got notified that he had jury duty. He showed up and found out what it was for. A serial killer and the killer was his friend from the bar. Derek Todd Lee. My uncle was promptly dismissed from jury duty for obvious reasons. Overall draft 9416 responded. One of my friend's family growing up had a beach house and I'd get invited every now and then. They had dollar and the house was massive, pretty cool place too. They even had a full-time maid who had her own flat at the back. One day they go there for a long weekend and when they opened the door, the place had been ransacked. It was all a mess, missing TVs, furniture, broken stuff, you get the picture. They went to check on the maid and her flat was empty, all her belongings were gone. They called the cops who came over and had a brief look, not interested from what they said, and left saying the maid probably had something to do with. And that's what everyone believed for week. Until the dad returned the following weekend to try and change the locks and etc., and he brought the dogs along with him. Yep, you know it, one of the dogs started digging and found the maid buried in the backyard under a top they had close to the pool. So the theory now is that whoever came in probably knew her, and she recognized them, and she had to go. Edit. I added the gruesome details on a post below. I don't recommend reading them, but it's there for those who are curious. Aurasia responded. In the 1990s, a nurse in New Jersey killed hundreds of hospital patients. Sometimes he would sneak into patients' rooms at night and inject them with fatal medication doses. Other times, he would put the medication into four bags in the supply room, so they would kill whatever random patient they were given to later. He was accused several times. Some patients pointed him out before they died. Some staff thought he was creepy and dangerous, and refused to work with him. He kept getting fired from hospitals. But the hospital managers knew that if he got arrested, they would be sued by the families of the patients he murdered. So they just fired him, and didn't call the police. That happened at 12 different hospitals over the course of 16 years. Investigators believe he killed as many as 400 people. After he was arrested, he confessed to 40 murders. In 29 of them he gave enough detail to be charged and plead guilty. He is linked to 300 plus more deaths than that, but details of those will probably never be known, because so much information was lost over time, or destroyed by the hospitals. Deleted, responded. When I was 17 I was hanging out with two friends and they wanted to go smoke weed in the woods. I didn't feel like it so I drove them and waited in the car. After a while I was getting bored and decided to go meet them, but there were four paths going off in different directions so I just took the biggest one. After walking for a few minutes in the pitch black forest, before flashlights on phones, I come across this dip in the trail and on the other side is a bench lightly visible due to the moonlight. On the bench is sitting a man, and another one in standing in front of him, but I can only make out silhouettes. Being sure these are my friends I yell out to them before walking over. If you ever walk the woods at night it's just an uneasy feeling all around so I was cautious to begin with. Well it turns out, just after yelling out to my friends, both silhouettes turn around towards me. Not a word, not a sound, the guy sitting down starts sprinting full fucking speed towards me in complete silence. I got the absolute fuck out of their sprinting also the other way, and tripping over shit, because I couldn't see anything. I finally get out and lock myself in my car, but I was really worried for my friends. Maybe a minute later I see them both coming out of a completely different path, they also confirmed they never saw me or anyone else. My heart still sinks just thinking about that dude sprinting in silence WTF was that shit. Flailing underscore aimlessly responded. My college girlfriend called me one night. The Baton Rouge serial killer, had been active a while, and she was being followed all over town and even after going in circles, by a wild truck, 
which the killer supposedly drove. She fit the victim profile, she was brunette living in house sitting for her aunt, a wealthy neighborhood. My roommate and I drove over and we filed in line behind her and the triac. She lived essentially o in the LSU grounds, so I assumed it was a stupid student prank or something. She parks at her aunt's house, truck stops one house short of her aunt's and we pull in behind her. I explain I'm going to go defuse the situation. Walk over to the truck, the FBI says the killer is a white guy, this man is African American. Explain no one is upset, but he's freaking out my girlfriend, he needs to leave. He looks side-eyed at me and drives off. I see the guy again a few months later, on the cover of the Baton Rouge paper, he's been arrested. He was the killer. Funkster 80 responded. I was around 10 years old. I was at school, but my mum told me she was thinking of taking me to the doctors in the afternoon, recurring eye issue. Lunchtime and I'm in the dining hall, when the office woman told me there was a taxi outside for me and I needed to go. I assumed my mum booked it for me as she can't drive. I cleared up my stuff and got my bag. Just about to leave when I remembered my jacket in my classroom. I rushed to get and head out for the taxi. Office woman tells me I'm too late and the taxi had gone without me. I just went back to class, but panicking my mum would be angry at me. School finishes and my mum is waiting for me at the gates. I burst into tears apologizing for missing the taxi and thinking I was in big trouble. She never ordered a taxi and had no clue what I was talking about. She ended up not making the doctor appointment. No one ever found out who ordered the taxi or who driver was. My mum doesn't like to think what would have happened if I hadn't forgotten my jacket and got in that taxi. TLDR Mr. Taxi I thought my mum booked for me, only to find out it could have been an attempted kidnapping. Deleted, responded. My aunt fell asleep on her couch one night and my uncle was asleep upstairs. She woke up around 12 a.m. to a random man staring at her while she slept. He said the guy upstairs was sound asleep. Meaning he came in, saw my aunt on the couch, looked around, saw my uncle asleep upstairs, and then sat there and watched. She told him to leave and somehow by the will of God he left. He slid in through the back door. We live in a relatively safe area. Craziest shit I have ever heard, James Jameson 420 responded. So when I was around 18 I went to town to drink something with my friends. We went all in and by 2 a.m. I was completely wasted. Couldn't see, walk or think straight. One of my mates remained sober to drive us back home. We went to the parking lot and I could hear a voice swimming somewhere in the dark. I turned around and saw two guys carrying a girl to a car. I got closer and now I could hear her voice. She obviously was drunk but she repeated no and I don't want over and over. Adrenaline kicked in and I became sober instantly. I screamed at them and immediately called the police. I wasn't fast enough so they could get in the car and drive off. But I saw the license plate, gave it to the woman I talked to at the police station, and they informed me about 10 minutes later that they arrested the two guys. The whole scene was so terrifying. This was in Germany. Edit. Thanks for all the nice comments and upvotes. If you need help dealing with sexual violence or need someone to talk, USA, 988 I think Germany, 0800. 116,016. Sansa Snark responded. When I was about 18 my friend and I went to the movies and then decided to walk home. It was a bit of a walk, but we didn't want to pay for a cab. I'm always pretty vigilant when walking, especially at night, so I noticed a guy with his hood up walking behind us. Every so often I'd look over my shoulder to check on him. He started pretty far behind us, but was gaining ground weirdly quickly. The last time I turned my head I caught him. Sprinting at us. I panic and tell my friend to run for it. She's in those fucking Birkenstock slip-on sandals that were popular then, and she's struggling to run, so I'm dragging her until we get to a gas station. I bang on the window and beg the clerk to let us in, but he says he can't because it's past a certain time at night, but he promises if the guy comes near us he'll call the cops. The guy comes down the hill, through the gas station, staring at us the entire time. I swear the only reason he thought better of it was because the gas clerk had the phone visibly in his hand, plus he was a big guy. I completely broke down after he left. Just the thought that he was running at us while I had my back turned scares the shit out of me. What if I hadn't turned when I did that last time? Lilith's grave 92 responded. This only happened earlier this year. A work colleague was off work for a long time, not like him at all. When he eventually returned we found out that his friend had been murdered by a group of football, soccer, wankers. They'd been in a pub watching a match for the team they supported. They were celebrating a win when a group of men from the opposing team got angry and started arguing. When my colleague and his friends left the pub, 
They jumped his friend and beat him so bad he ended up in hospital where he eventually succumbed to the injuries. This is one of the reasons I hate football, especially where I am, England. Riot vans, hundreds of police etc. always around every train station and football stadium. Sad little men willing to take a life over a bag of air getting kicked around. It's not the first time, certainly won't be the last, someone has died over fucking football. PCK man responded. My grandfather's village was raised by the Nazis. He had nine siblings. The Nazis came to the village in retribution due to guerrilla attacks and they believed the guerrillas were hiding there. Most young men fled before they arrived. The men that were in the village were lined up against a wall and shot. My grandfather's mother put half her children, the youngest, in the cellar and she took the other half with her because the Nazis were rounding up the entire village and locked them inside the church. The reason she had split her children was because she feared they would all be killed, so she wanted at least some of them to survive. The Nazis ransacked and burned nearly every house in the village, including my grandfather's. He was in the cellar with his siblings and their house burned above them, but they were saved. Those in the church also survived, but many didn't. After this the Nazis would come again some time after and pretty much force all the young men and boys, including my grandfather, to help make roads and fortifications for them. Despite it all they all survived the war, though many in the family didn't. Malise Fairwind responded. I'm the firstborn, and when I was just a wee babe, my mother put me to bed and headed off to bed herself. Being new parents, they were all about the baby monitor. Dad was already asleep, and just as my mom was drifting off, she heard the telltale crackle. Don't worry, sweetheart, mommy's here. Needless to say, my mom about shit herself and catapulted to the nursery to find me fast asleep and totally alone. Turns out the neighbor had just had a baby too, and they were picking up each other's signals. They actually picked up all kinds of things over time. Used to hear the truckers radioing to each other from the highway like a mile away. Deleted, responded. My brother was dating the love of his life up until a few years ago. They met because they both worked in a restaurant, he was a piano player, she was a waitress. Things were going amazingly between them. The only problem was, she had a jealous ex. He knew when they left work, and what shifts they'd work since it was the same each week. He decided for whatever reason, he was going to teach my brother a lesson for dating his ex, and planned to attack him with a Stanley knife when he left work one evening. That night, my brother and his partner were getting ready to leave, and he stopped for a second to talk to a colleague, meaning she left. First, as soon as she stepped out the door, he slashed her throat, and then ran. She died in front of him. That attack was meant for my brother. He's gone through a lot of therapy, and down some very dark paths since then. But is finally coming out of the other side of it. But it's terrifying how close I came to losing my little brother, and how much he lost as a consequence, because of some fucking deranged nut job. If I could get my hands on that guy, I'd get locked up myself. But he's in prison for a long time, and so far he's staying there. The Dreaming Goose responded. A robbery at my place, but the way in which it happened. I lived in a basement suite with my younger brother of a quiet neighborhood. The entire front of the house is exposed to the sidewalk, but the sides and the back are covered with fenced and trees. The only way to see if anyone is in the basement is through this small window in my bedroom that's about five feet from my bed. I got word while I was out that my place had been robbed. The robbers went through the basement suite door through the back, kicked it open, then made themselves upstairs after robbing the basement suite. They just so happened to rob the place in a 30-minute window when myself, my brother and the people upstairs were out. This means they were watching us for a couple days and monitoring our patterns. What scared me was not really the robbery, but the image of me sleeping while a robber presses his face against the window five feet from away from my bed just watching me. MC Wolf 13 responded. The case of the Clutter family murders, told expertly by Truman Capote in his book, In Cold Blood. What really gets me about the case is that all it took was one person knowing the family to make the connection that ultimately ended their lives. Floyd Wells, a former employee of the father, told his cellmate about the clutters and that inmate, Richard Hickok, became convinced the family had a fortune stored in a safe at their house. Upon his release, Hickok contacted another former cellmate, Perry Smith, and they planned to rob the family. There was no safe and no fortune. Instead, the pair left with a small radio, a pair of binoculars, and less than $50 cash, along with the lives of Herb, Bonnie, Kenyon, and Nancy Clutter. A quote from Hickok talking about Herb has especially stuck with me, I thought he was a very nice gentleman. I thought so right up to the moment I cut his throat. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one.